Look at this crumbling ruin. Just ancient stones and arches, right? Wrong. What you're seeing is the most technologically advanced construction project in human history. The Roman Colosseum wasn't just a building. It was an engineering marvel that makes our modern skyscrapers look like children's toys. Here's what will shock you. This simple, ancient amphitheater was completed in less than eight years, without a single crane, power tool, or ton of modern concrete. While we struggled to build stadiums in a decade, the Romans created a structure so sophisticated that it housed 50,000 screaming spectators, featured retractable roofs, underground elevators, and a drainage system that could flood the entire arena for naval battles. But here's the truly mind-bending part. Despite our satellites, supercomputers, and construction robots, we cannot recreate the Colosseum today. Not won't. Cannot. The question isn't whether we have the technology, it's whether we have the audacity, the workforce, and most importantly, the lost secrets that made it possible in the first place. Today, we're diving deep into the greatest construction mystery of all time. You'll discover Roman engineering secrets that we're still trying to decode, meet the army of workers who moved mountains of stone with their bare hands, and learn why this ancient wonder remains humanity's most impossible achievement. The year is 69 AD. Rome is bleeding. Emperor Nero is dead and his grotesque legacy haunts the city. A sprawling golden palace called the Domus Aurea that devoured 300 acres of Rome's heart. Where Romans once lived, Nero built gardens, lakes, and a colossal statue of himself. Enter Vespasian, a battle-hardened general who understood something Nero never did. Power comes from the people's love, not their fear. His masterstroke. He would tear down Nero's private paradise and build something unprecedented, a gift to the Roman people that would dwarf every arena in the empire. This wasn't just architecture. This was political genius. The Colosseum would rise exactly where Nero's artificial lake had been, transforming a symbol of imperial greed into a monument of public generosity. Every stone would whisper the same message. This emperor serves Rome, not himself. But Vespasian's vision went deeper than politics. He was declaring Rome's dominance to the world. Barbarian chiefs would enter this arena and witness 50,000 Romans cheering in perfect unison. Organized by social rank, every seat assigned, every entrance controlled. They would see Roman engineering magic, wild beasts appearing from underground, instant floods, retractable shade covering the entire crowd. Mathematical precision the message was terrifyingly clear. Today. If Rome can build this for entertainment, imagine what we can do to our enemies. Let's talk numbers that will make your head spin. The Colosseum isn't just big, it's impossibly big. Picture an ellipse 187 meters long and 156 meters wide, rising 48 meters into the sky. That's equivalent to a modern 12-story building, but this isn't a simple rectangle. It's a complex curved structure that required mathematical precision we barely understand today. Inside this stone giant, 50,000 to 80,000 spectators could sit comfortably, more than most modern stadiums. But here's where Roman genius reveals itself. Every single person, from the emperor to the poorest citizen, had a perfect view of the action. No obstructed sight lines, no bad seats, how? The Romans invented tiered seating mathematics. Each level was precisely angled to optimize viewing angles. The arena floor, measuring 83 by 48 meters, was visible from every seat with geometric perfection. Modern sports architects study these angles and still can't improve on them. But the real breakthrough was the vomitoria. And no, that's not what you think. These were exit tunnels, 80 of them, designed to empty the entire Colosseum in less than 10 minutes. Imagine evacuating 70,000 people from a modern stadium in 10 minutes. It's impossible with today's building codes and crowd control technology. The acoustics were equally mind-blowing. A whisper from the arena floor could be heard in the highest seats without amplification. We must ensure the Romans had discovered acoustic engineering yes. principles that concert halls today struggled to replicate. They created sound shadows and resonance chambers built into the very walls. This wasn't just architecture. It was mathematical poetry carved in stone. Every measurement, every angle, every curve served multiple purposes. Structural integrity, crowd flow, acoustics, and visual perfection. Here's where the mystery deepens. The Colosseum has survived nearly 2,000 years of earthquakes, wars, fires, and looting. Meanwhile, modern concrete structures start cracking after decades. What did the Romans know that we've forgotten? The secret lies in their revolutionary concrete. 
Opus Camantisium. This wasn't ordinary concrete. It was a supernatural mixture of volcanic ash from Mount Vesuvius lime and water that created something extraordinary, self-healing concrete. When cracks appear in Roman concrete, rainwater activates the volcanic ash, causing it to literally regrow and seal the damage. It's like biological healing, but in stone. Our modern concrete, it just gets weaker with every crack. We've spent yes, billions trying to reverse engineer this formula, and we're still missing crucial elements. But concrete was just the foundation. The real showstopper was travertine limestone. 100,000 cubic meters of it quarried from Tivoli 20 miles away. Each block weighed up to five tons and was cut with such precision that they fit together Hello? without mortar. Can you hear me? Like a massive 3D puzzle. Connecting these massive stones were 300 tons of iron clamps and lead joints. The Romans invented a clamping system so effective that medieval scavengers spent centuries trying to extract the iron, leaving the characteristic holes you see today. These weren't this simple connections. The they were engineered joints that allowed the building to flex during earthquakes without collapsing. The brickwork tells another incredible yeah, story. Roman bricks weren't just clay. They were precision manufactured building units with standardized dimensions wow. and quality control that puts this modern construction to shame. Winner. Each brick this was stamped with the maker's mark, the clay source and production date. Full industrial traceability, 2,000 years ago. Perhaps most remarkably, the Romans created different concrete formulas for different parts of the building. Underwater concrete for foundations, lightweight concrete for upper levels, and ultra-strong concrete for load-bearing walls. They had specialized engineering materials before we even understood the concept of materials science. Today's concrete lasts 5,100 years in ideal conditions. Roman concrete? It's getting stronger with age. The volcanic ash continues reacting with seawater and moisture, creating new mineral compounds that increase structural integrity over centuries. Now comes the most staggering part of the story, the human machine that built this wonder. Picture this, 100,000 tons of travertine, 300,000 tons of brick and concrete, millions of individual stones, all moved, shaped, and assembled by human hands and simple machines. The workforce was a carefully orchestrated army. At the bottom, Jewish prisoners from the siege of Jerusalem, providing the muscle for the heaviest labor. Above them, thousands of Roman slaves, each trained in specific construction skills, leading them master craftsmen, architects, and engineers, the Fabri and Machinatories, who turned Vespasian's vision into engineering reality. But here's what's truly mind-boggling about Roman logistics. They moved 6,000 tons of building materials every single day for eight years straight. No trucks, no diesel engines, no modern cranes, just human organization on a scale that defies comprehension. The travertine journey alone was an engineering marvel. Five-ton stone blocks were quarried at Tivoli, loaded onto ox-drawn carts using wooden cranes and pulleys, then transported 20 miles over Roman roads built specifically to handle this load. At the construction site, teams of workers using compound pulley systems could lift these massive stones 50 meters into the air. The Romans invented industrial-scale project management 2,000 years before modern business schools. Work was divided into specialized teams, Stone cutters, mortar mixers, crane operators, scaffolding builders. Each team had quotas, quality standards, and coordination protocols that kept thousands of workers moving in perfect synchronization. Consider the scaffolding alone. Millions of wooden poles creating a forest of temporary structures around the rising walls. These weren't simple ladders. They were engineered platforms that could support tons of stone while allowing workers to move freely at every level. The Romans essentially built a temporary wooden colosseum to construct the permanent stone one. The crane technology was equally sophisticated. Using human-powered tread wheels, teams could generate enough lifting force to hoist multi-ton blocks with precision placement. These weren't crude devices. They were calibrated machines with bronze bearings, adjustable counterweights, and safety mechanisms. But perhaps most impressive was the supply chain coordination. Volcanic ash from Naples, iron from Elba, lead from Britain, exotic marble from across the empire. All arriving at precisely the right time in exactly the right quantities. No computers, no GPS tracking, no modern communications. Just Roman organizational genius and relentless execution. Today, coordinating 10,000 workers on a single project is considered a massive undertaking. 
requiring sophisticated software and management systems. The Romans did it with papyrus, bronze tablets, and pure human discipline. Beneath the arena floor lay the Colosseum's most spectacular secret, the Hypogeum, a subterranean labyrinth that made the impossible seem routine. This wasn't just basement storage. It was a three-story underground theater of mechanical wonders. Picture a maze of corridors, animal cages, and chambers connected by 28 elevators operated entirely by human power. Gladiators could vanish through trapdoors and reappear instantly on the opposite side of the arena. Wild beasts, lions, Place elephants, beast. rhinoceros, would materialize as if by magic, rising from the underworld through 80 vertical shafts. The elevator system was pure mechanical genius. Using counterweights, pulleys, and teams of slaves operating in perfect synchronization, these lifts could raise a full-grown elephant from underground chambers to arena level in seconds. The timing had to be flawless. One miscalculation could ruin an entire spectacle before 70,000 witnesses. But the Hypogeum's crown jewel was its drainage and flooding system. The Romans could transform the entire arena into a lake for naval battle reenactments, then drain it completely for gladiator combat all within hours. The engineering required precise water flow calculations, waterproof concrete, and drainage channels that modern hydraulic engineers study with amazement. Above ground, an even more impressive feat of engineering stretched across the sky. The Valerium, a massive retractable awning system operated by 1,000 Roman sailors. This wasn't a simple canvas cover. It was a sophisticated sail system using 240 wooden masts and miles of rope, providing shade for the entire audience while allowing perfect air circulation. The sailors, experts in rigging and wind management, could deploy or retract this enormous canopy in minutes, responding to weather changes with naval precision. It was air conditioning, Roman style. Here's a fact that will shatter your assumptions about ancient versus modern construction. The Colosseum was completed in just eight years. Eight years from groundbreaking to grand opening. Compare that to modern mega projects. Berlin's Brandenburg Airport took 14 years. London's Wembley Stadium took seven years with modern machinery. How did the Romans achieve this impossible speed? The secret lay in prefabrication and modular construction. Techniques we think we invented in the 20th century. Stone blocks were cut to standardized sizes at the quarries, Careful not on site. Concrete sections were preformed using reusable Lower wooden molds. Iron clamps were mass-produced in workshops across the empire. The Romans also employed parallel construction, multiple teams working simultaneously on different sections, all coordinated to meet at precise connection points. They didn't build the Colosseum one level at a time. They built it in synchronized segments that rose together like a complex mechanical watch. Perhaps most importantly, they had something modern projects often lack, unlimited political will and resources. When the emperor wanted his monument completed, delays meant death. Quality control was absolute, but so was the schedule. No bureaucratic delays, no environmental impact studies, no budget committees. Just relentless execution of a clear vision. The result? A construction pace that averaged 12 vertical feet of progress every month across the entire perimeter. A rate that would be impressive even by today's standards with modern equipment. So here's the paradox that haunts modern engineers. With all our technology, satellites, supercomputers, robotic construction equipment, why can't we rebuild the Colosseum? The answer reveals uncomfortable truths about our modern limitations. First, the brutal economics. Cost. Conservative estimates suggest a faithful Colosseum replica would cost 10 15 billion dollars in today's money. But that's just materials and basic labor. Factor in modern safety regulations, environmental requirements, and union contracts, and you're looking at 50 billion or more for a building with no practical modern purpose. Second, we've lost the knowledge. Roman concrete's exact formula remains partially mysterious. We understand the basic ingredients, but not the precise ratios, mixing techniques, or curing processes that made itself healing. Modern attempts to recreate it have failed to match its durability and strength. Third, the craftsmanship problem. We don't have enough skilled stone workers. The Romans had armies of master masons who could cut perfect joints by hand and eye. Today, maybe a few thousand people worldwide possess those skills. We've mechanized construction but lost the human expertise that made precision stonework possible. 
finally, there's the workforce paradox. The Romans could deploy 100,000 workers on a single project through slave labor and imperial decree. Modern democratic societies, thankfully, can't and won't replicate those conditions. Our labor protections, safety standards, and human rights make Roman-scale projects impossible. But perhaps the deepest reason we can't recreate the Colosseum is cultural. We lack the imperial audacity to attempt something so monumentally impractical. The Romans built the Colosseum not because it made economic sense, but because it was impossible, and therefore proved their greatness. The Colosseum stands today not as a relic of the past, but as a challenge to the future. It whispers an uncomfortable question. Have we become more advanced or simply more complicated? The Romans achieved the impossible with organization, audacity, and human ingenuity. They had no computers but perfect project management. No steel but concrete that heals itself. No machines but coordination that moved mountains. While our skyscrapers crumble after decades, the Colosseum grows stronger with age. While our stadiums take decades to build, theirs rose in eight years. While we debate and delay, they decided and delivered. Perhaps the Colosseum's greatest lesson isn't about engineering or architecture, it's about human potential. When a civilization commits totally to an impossible vision, when it marshals every resource and skill toward a single goal, it can achieve things that make the future look backward. So here's the question that should haunt us. If the Romans could build the impossible with primitive tools and human hands, what impossible thing should we be building today? What monument to human achievement are we leaving for future civilizations to puzzle over? The Colosseum isn't just Rome's greatest achievement. It might be humanity's greatest construction challenge that we may never surpass. And maybe that's exactly the point. This was human.